It's the very first brew day on my brand new electric brewery. It's a 5 to 10 gallon three vessel Herms system that I bought from High Gravity Brewing and I'm making today an 1880 porter. A recipe that I got from Ron Pattinson's blog site called Shut Up About Barclay Perkins. Uh, let's take a look at the brewery. The hot liquor tank is a Bayou Classics kettle. Uh, I've installed a sight glass from brewhardware.com. Uh, the Herms coil is built into the top of the kettle as it came from High Gravity Brewing. The mash tun is a Blickman boiler maker and it's set up just as you would get it uh, from Blickman if you ordered it from them. Again, I got uh, this whole system from High Gravity Brewing. Uh, it has the Blickman uh, false bottom and it also has the, uh, the Blickman auto sparge attached inside. The boil kettle, just like the hot liquor tank, is a Bayou Classics. Uh, both of those, by the way, have the Blickman boil coil heating elements installed. There is also a uh, whirlpool arm installed and I put on a sight tube again from uh, Brew Hardware. It's their flexible or flexi sight, whatever they call it. The uh, control unit is a Warthog EBC 330. I have it in mash mode right now. My target mash, as you can see on the bottom, is 163 degrees. Here is the recipe I'm using today. It's an 1880 Whitbread Porter. The grist is nine pounds of pale ale malt. It says crisp on my uh, recipe here, but I'm using Breeze. Uh, one and a 1.12 ounces, or rather one pound 12 ounces of brown malt and 12 ounces of black malt, uh, two ounces of East Kent Goldings, and uh, it says two packages English ale yeast WLP002 from White Labs, but I'm uh, using just one package and making a starter. Yeah, so there we go. All right, I'm setting up to move my strike water to the mash tun. And again, this is the first time I've used this system, so there is likely to be a, a fumble or two. And as you can see, uh, again, I, I mentioned that my pumps are just kind of Mickey Mouse right now. I'm going to mount them down here somewhere below the ball valves. Um, speaking of ball valves, let's open one. And on the controller, uh, all I need to do is turn on the pump, cross your fingers, and I should be transferring from here. I'm going through the, the Herms coil for some reason. I don't have to, I don't think, right now, but I'm, I'm going to anyway. Uh, and move my water into the mash tun. That sounds better. Need to prime the pump. I need to turn the ball valve on here too. There we go. Yeah, I said there would be some fumbles. Yes, we are moving water. So I'm set up now in recirculation mode. I missed my mash temperature big time by about nine degrees. Uh, I was shooting for 150 and I got about 131, 132. Apparently I'm losing a lot more heat in the transfer from the hot liquor tank to the mash tun than I was anticipating. Uh, I was allowing for about four to five degrees of loss, so I raised my 
uh, normal strike temperature up that much, uh, I need to bump it up some more. But the recirculation is underway, so let's take a look at that. So I'm pumping from the hot liquor tank in the center through the Herms coil, which is just a, a copper loop inside the kettle, out of that loop, and back into the mash tun. Now the um, temperature of the hot liquor tank is set to about 168. So that way as the wort moves through this coil, it's going through uh, hotter water than I need in here slowly raising the temperature and apparently the auto uh, sparge only works if there is a sufficient amount of liquid in the kettle and apparently there's not. This is actually a valve that moves in and out. It's supposed to regulate the flow through this tube. which is supposed to float. You can hear that valve trying to, trying to actuate. But um, that's supposed to float just under the surface. Hard to tell if that's what's happening or not with all the, the foam on there. But yeah, this is the setup that I'm trying to learn. First brew day. Take a look at my current temperature of the mash. My target is 150. I'm at 147 now. 46, 47. You can see the hot liquor tank there. Set at 168. It's currently at 166. I mentioned that I got the recipe off Ron Pattinson's blog, Shut Up About Barclay Perkins, but he's also got a book called The Home Brewer's Guide to Vintage Beer. Lots of good history in this book. And this recipe in the book is slightly different than the one he posted online. But it's not uncommon for breweries to um, have altered their recipe throughout the course of time or even throughout the course of the year. And I just heard my pump go on and off. That means it's automatically regulating the temperature. And that's the uh, auto sparge trying to, uh, trying to operate in less than optimal volumes of liquid. Uh, yep. I bumped up my mash temperature a little bit to 152. The temperature got up to 153, shut the pump off. When it gets a little bit below 152, it'll turn it back on. Pretty cool. It's going to hold my mash temperatures much better than I ever could manually. While I'm mashing, let's take a look at a couple of projects I've uh, undertaken. Some of them have come out well, like this one. I had this little table that I made out of a shelving kit I bought at the home store. This is where my original uh, cooler mash tun sat. And I converted it into a, um, a milling station. I had my hand cranked or drill powered uh, barley crusher here. And I bought this little motor kit and motorized it. And it works the bomb. And here is a project that didn't go so well. And I just now, this very moment, noticed my mistake. Counterflow chiller. I bought some stainless steel compression fittings with uh, Camlock quick disconnects. Even got the uh, thermometer on this one. It's a T fitting. The mistake is I put them on the wrong end. That is a male garden hose connector. That should be for the water out. So this whole thing needs to be flipped around so I can connect my garden hose here. 
and the thermometer needs to go on this end. Problem is, stainless steel compression fittings, I don't believe, are reusable. Once they're compressed, you're done for. So I have to get new fittings. How I'm going to chill, I'm not really sure. I guess I'll just flip this over and uh, I, I won't be able to tell the temperature coming out. Huh. Told you there was going to be some conundrums. This is one. Meantime, however, my mash is maintaining very well at 152. The pump is coming on and off when needed, which is awesome. There, it just went off because the uh, temperature went up to 153, and it'll let it settle back to 152 before it kicks on again. Awesome. All right, the mash is done. Uh, I checked my gravity. It looks like I'm a little bit high, but I'll double check that in just a moment. Right now, I just want to confirm with my diagram uh, that I've got all my plumbing correct for a fly sparge. So I want to go from the hot liquor tank where I have 170 degree water, pump it into the uh, mash tun, and from the mash tun, pump that into the boil kettle. And what I want to do, and I've never done this before, so watch me now, um, maintain the flow between these vessels so that I'm not outrunning the mash tun. I want this to drain into the boil kettle about the same rate that I'm flowing into here so that my liquid levels uh, don't drop below um, the top of the grain bed. Right? It's my understanding. All right, let's go. So at this point, I'm kind of batch sparging. I uh, had the flows um, incorrectly balanced uh, so that I ran out of water from the uh, hot liquor tank uh, before my boil kettle was full. Overflowed the mash tun a little bit. I wouldn't say overflowed. I outran the output. So I'm out of water here, still got mash water here, still filling the boil kettle. So I was doing a fast fly sparge to begin with, now I'm kind of batch sparging. What are you going to do? So now I'm starting the boil phase. I've plugged the, uh, the boil coil uh, to my controller. I set the controller to boil mode and the power to 100%. I'll turn that down once the boil begins. I uh, took a gravity reading to see what my post mash gravity is. And I've got 11 bricks, which on my uh, Beersmith calculator comes out to 1043 measured post mash gravity. My estimated post mash gravity was 1041, so I'm a little bit better than that. So, so far so good. All right, so Beersmith tells me that uh, even at 3.8% alpha acid, uh, two and a quarter ounces of hops will give me 44.6 IBUs. I'm targeting the upper 30s, but again, uh, the bag was punctured and it's been in the freezer for six, eight months. So I'm guessing that they've lost some of their oomph. So an extra quarter of an ounce isn't going to hurt. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Here's a pretty sight. You can see my hop spider is pretty darn full. If I get any closer I'll get steam on here. But uh, I may switch over to my hop bag. So, oh and I fixed my, uh, well I didn't fix it. 
But my chiller down here, I uh, took the thermometer end off uh, with the T. Which was here. I had another cam lock connection that I screwed on there and just flipped the whole thing over. So now the inlet is the, the right connection, the, the male or female, and the outlet is the correct male hose fitting. So I just don't have a thermometer now. I'll get around to fixing that later. I've been chilling now for a while. Measured uh, the temperature here and uh, it's about 71 degrees. Pretty close. So I'm going to stop the, uh, the plate chiller. Transfer to my fermenter. And I uh, just checked the mail. Check it out. Got my Zymer G magazine today. How fortuitous. And since it's been doing this all day long, I'm going to call this a uh, 1880 Whitbread Rainy Day Porter. All right. Cold beer. Well, 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 well